Um, you can all wave at Jeremy. Nice to meet you in person. I yeah, nice to, to nice to meet you all. Fantastic. We just uh, the camera over there. Um, I'm, I'm preferring to be on behind the scenes so that you get to catch the students. But just to give you a, a basic introduction, um, I'm, I'm a, a, a maths educator, and through a lot of the global collaboration projects that I have, um, I came across uh, Laura on the HLW Skype group, and fortunately. It enabled me to then find out a little bit more about what you do, and I think that any teacher will tell you that the opportunity to spread nice ideas is a wonderful thing, and also being involved with TEDx Cape Town uh, and knowing that you are a, a tester, there's certainly a lot of overlap in, in the sense that we've got some great ideas and I think they are definitely worth sharing. So we've got two schools over here. We've got Hertzbier High School, which is a Jewish day school in Cape Town, and we have the LEAP School, and L, one of the students from the LEAP School, would like to just tell you a little bit more about that particular campus. And then we're going to hit you with some tough questions, so I hope that you're ready. Okay, yeah, well, I'm certainly ready, and, uh, you know, looking forward to, you know, chatting through uh, any questions that the, the young people might have. So, yeah, let's go for it. It's exciting. It's lovely okay. to meet you all. So, L, would you like to, to tell Jeremy a little bit about LEAP School? Okay. Yeah. Come, come a little closer, come a little closer. <laughs> Let's sit down. No, you can sit down. You want to sit down? That's fine. Okay, this is L. Um, um, is all about math and science, but we're also dealing with like social issues, like the problems that we experience at home. Like we have an L an old class where we get to share about our L O being life orientation. Yeah. Uh, so we have a class where we get to share about our feelings, like our day to day lives, and then now. Yeah, so basically it is it's about updating the people of the township, like trying to try make a better person out of the people that are from the township. Then like creates people like scientists of tomorrow. So that's basically it. And it's also the black school. So, so it benefits mainly black students, obviously, and are all local or some from other countries, uh, refugees? Yeah, we have some people from Burundi, like Zimbabwe. So people that can understand Kosa. See, because also Kosa is the first language. Okay, all right, so Jeremy, did, did you get that? So it's, yeah. a, it's a school that, that takes the holistic approach in terms of not only educating the, the student, but educating the soul and, and uplifting and empowering the community and hopefully uh, giving a lot of these students who, who financially wouldn't have an opportunity, uh, the actual opportunity to, to engage uh, on, on level playing fields. If that makes sense. Yes, it makes total sense. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so we, we're gonna we're gonna hit you with a couple of questions. And yep. um, are there any volunteers who'd like to start off first? Would you like me to go first? Oh, okay, you got one. Zach's yeah. got a question. Okay, let's let's hear it. Uh, you want to just come front so we can see you, and I'll try and zoom in so that Jeremy can see who you are. There we go. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. Hello, mate. Hey, nice to meet you. So, um, Jeremy, how would you best describe the word peace? And um, do you truly believe that there will be a peace one day, or do you think there will be a form of peace one day? Um, I think, uh, well, listen, I mean, de describing the word peace, for, for me, uh, I think peace is, is when you're not frightened. Um, peace is when, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, peace for me is not frightened. Whether that's somebody... I mean, because the other side of not being frightened is being frightened, i.e. somebody's about to hit you. Yeah. Now that could be in, in the school, that could be in the school, in terms of the bullying that we all know exists, which is a form of violence, obviously. Yeah. Or indeed in the home, in, in domestic violence, which, you know, one in four women will suffer from. Um, it's yes. a very, very serious issue. It's in fact the greatest war that humanity faces, is, is domestic violence. Or indeed in the workplace or in our communities. So for me, peace is when you're not frightened in, in the context of potentially violence. And that's what peace is to me. And therefore, fortunately, most of my life I have not, um, I've, you know, I've been living at peace. So that's what I would call peace. Um, in terms of whether I think the day will be a success, the answer is, uh, oh, sorry, your question was, do you think there will be peace for one day or a form of peace one day? Yes. 
Yes, I think yes. that um, certainly what we're seeing now is a form of peace one day, which is growing. And, um, you know, many years ago, having created the Day of Peace, you know that I went into Afghanistan to prove yes. that it could work in the place that everybody said it was impossible. Yes. Um, and where a group like the Taliban could be involved in that process, which everybody also said would be impossible. So I'm delighted that, you know, in a situation as complex as that, uh, there was relative peace, which allowed, obviously, WHO and UNICEF to take 10,000 vaccinators into areas that you wouldn't normally be able to go for fear of being uh, attacked or kidnapped, and obviously the 1.4 million children were vaccinated. So that was a form of peace on Peace Day with a, an incredible you know, humanitarian result, and I believe that can increase. Um, and in fact, this year we will see it increase. Um, you know, Global Truths 2012 is all about seeing and recording the largest cessation of hostilities and violence i.e. the violence in our homes, communities and schools, as well as in areas of conflict, and therefore we all have a role to play. So I think that we'll see an increase. I think the world will become less violent on the 21st of September. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, do I think it can work all over the world for one day? Well, I'd, like to, I'd certainly like to think so, and I think we'll get most of the way there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a very big world with a lot of people on it. So the idea of every human being in the planet not hitting... Um, uh, you know, a, a person at school or indeed a family member or indeed somebody in our community is obviously a tall order. But certainly we can create a peace, uh, you know, on a massive scale for one day. And that will be a sign for the new generations that we can unite, that we can interculturally cooperate, that we can live in a more peaceful world if we collectively work together. And that's the important thing for me. But thank you for your question. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Any takers? Don't be shy. Let's hear it. Stand up and just introduce yourself. Hello, Mr. Gilly. My name is McKenna. Um, I wanted to know, like, on behalf of the school, how do we get involved on that like, for Peace Day? What is there sort of things that we do? Is there a march? What type of stuff can we do? Okay, well, I mean, on the 21st of September 2012, uh, we hope to see the largest reduction of violence and the largest gathering of individuals in the name of peace. So the first thing that you can do is, um, you know, ask your teacher um, if you can celebrate the 21st of September. Are you at school on the 21st of September? No. Are you? We will we'll double check for you. We're going to double check. Okay. Yeah. 21st of September. Yes. We are we are at school on the 21st of September. Okay, great. This, what other week is it? To say, the first thing yeah. to do, and thank you for your question, is to organise an activity in school, hopefully involving the whole of the school, um, which may well be able to involve your families. It's a Friday night. It'll be a Friday in the evening. We're doing a huge show here with Elton John and other incredible international artists in London hosted by Jude Law and showing all the films and the results of activities all over the world. So you will be celebrating with us and everybody. I think that what we would love you to do is do something in your classroom, in your school, with everybody involved, whether that's a peace assembly, whether that's uh, you know, one day, one goal, the football campaign, uh, whether that is um, you know, a, a musical event, whether that is an art exhibition, a photographic exhibition, um, you know, whether it's poet poetry readings in relation to peace, whatever it may be, whether it's a debate and a discussion, whether it's showing the film the day after peace in school, whether it's, you know, your teachers registering with the Peace One Day Education Resource, which is free, and there are loads of lesson plans that they can choose from, 21 lesson plans of giving them ideas of what you can do on the day. So the first and most important thing is that will you as a school you know, uh, you know, observe the day? And obviously I'm sure the answer will be yes. And that in itself is going to be a step forward in the peace process because people will be inspired, they will feel empowered, there will be great learnings that come from that day, there will be great relationships that will be built, there will be less bullying in the school. I'm not suggesting there's bullying in your school, but there is, you know, we, we know that there, bullying exists everywhere in the world. So it's a day, of, it's a day where you know, it's, it's, it's very exciting that we can all be involved you know, in activity. So that's what I'd love to see happen. What also would be amazing, can, can you hear me still? Yeah. yeah, we can, we can. What also would be amazing is if you could as a group, because you're from an international school, is to uh, communicate with some other schools. 
Um, communicate with some friends. You know, you mentioned in uh, Burundi, uh, you know, somebody mentioned your, the, the first young man who spoke mentioned Burundi or Zimbabwe or, you know, the different countries where you have connections. See if you can get the young people in those countries to observe the day. Because the only way that this is really going to work, the only way that we're really going to create a day which our world... Set, there's no, you know, the world has never come together. You know, we, many people don't know about the peace day. We've got to make sure everybody knows about this day because as a consequence of that, lives are saved. So one of the things that you can do is effectively join the Peace One Day team, become peace messengers yourselves and spread the word and maybe put a world map up on the wall in your classroom and see, you know, put, you know, little... You know, little flags or, or, or little pins as to where you've been able to manifest an action somewhere in the world. So there's so many creative and concrete, you know, uh, ways of which you can become involved. And really, that's what this is all about. That's why I'm speaking to you today. Um, and uh, you know, so if we work together, we can create peace one day. The other thing to do is please join our Facebook community um, if you're old enough and your parents are, you know, you're allowed to. Um, you know, also we're creating a membership on the website. Um, which is just, just about, it's just being tweaked at the moment where we really create individuals who sign up as being peace messengers for us. I mean, that's the whole idea. The whole idea here is that we all get involved in this process and we create a day which to date in the history of humankind hasn't happened where we unite and celebrate peace and sustainability as a global community in the hope that that will move us forward so that we can have not just one day but more. But thanks for your question. So I hope that answers it. Lots of ideas there. It, it, it does. But now, Jeremy, I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who thinks outside of the box. And I'm thinking that, obviously, to get a message across, you are certainly in the media field. So you are definitely capitalizing on the Internet, Facebook, Twitter, um, and, and obviously the, 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 the viral aspect of, of getting a message out there is, is quite uh, tempting. Because, you know, if you can get a message out there, and uh, you just have to watch YouTube to see which video clips have gone viral, um, obviously that's something that uh, could get a message across to many people very quickly. But I was thinking, you know, why not use things like flash mobs at schools? You know, young people like to get involved in drama and acting, and it would be really, really cool if, if there was some sort of coordinated flash mob event around the world with schools on that particular day, where if they had a, an assembly, all of a sudden, uh, kids in the assembly would stand up and, and do something innovative to celebrate and, and, and uh, commemorate Peace Day in, in, a, in, a, in a way that uh, is appropriate and, and maybe sends a positive message around. What, what would you say to that? Well, I'd say that that was a great idea. And, um, you know, w I, I think it's a great idea. And firstly, what, would be, what might be really interesting is if you guys were to make a little film, you know, get a, video, get a mobile phone or get a little video camera, and maybe, maybe yourself as a teacher or indeed any one of the students, why don't you, know, why don't you make a one-minute film or a two-minute film saying that, that you think that's a great idea and give some examples. Um, we can all tweet about it. We can all Facebook. I'll put it on our website. We'll do a blog about it. And you know, maybe, maybe you guys can set up a Facebook community or maybe you know, as a project, as a group of young people, you could see if you could get as many schools around the world or in every continent of the world doing exactly what you've just suggested. I think that's the interesting point about, you know, so yes, it's a great idea. Yes, let's make it happen. And, you know, let's get it out there. And, you know, that can be inspired out of this session today. And, you know, that's exactly what we want to see happen. The point here is that we want to live in a peaceful and sustainable world, that we want 365 days of peace. And if we could create one, then that would be a sign for us all that maybe we could create more. And therefore, your idea is incredibly important. We'll have ideas as well. And if we can work together and become a much bigger team, then, of course, we will see great things go on all over the world. You know, and I can tell you that you know, that team is growing you know, rapidly. You know, I was recently with Jean Ping, the chairperson of the African Union in Addis Ababa. And I can tell you that the chairperson of the African Union absolutely wants to institutionalize the day across the whole of Africa. So, you know, and you, you know, I mean, amazing commitments from the African Union. So I very much hope that your idea becomes a reality. And let's just see if we can make it happen. It's brilliant. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, we've got... Well, between the two of you. <laughs> just start. Okay, you want to give it a go? Okay. Okay, since the UN is trying to help the world, like... Sorry? Since the UN is... Trying... The, you can come a little bit more forward, yeah. 
Okay, since the UN is trying to help the world, do you think the UN has attacked the, the core of the problems that are, are being experienced by the African people? Is the UN attacking the core of the problems that are being experienced Oops. by the Africans? Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat the question. Um, so, is it L? L, L suggested that uh, the UN is obviously involved in, in all these initiatives, but he wants to know, are they really dealing with the core of the problems? You know, the, the actual causes of, of, of this, the disputes that take place and, and the battles and the wars and the, you know, are, are they really actually doing what they could be doing to, to avoid that type of conflict? Yeah, well, it's a very good question. I mean, I think I don't work for the, uh, for the, for the United Nations, as, as you know, Al, um, or, or indeed the African Union. Um, and I've been, you know, obviously was with Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the UN, very recently, as you know, from our website, and uh, as I just mentioned to you a few weeks ago in Addis, in Ethiopia, with uh, Jean Ping uh, from the African Union. What I can tell you is they seem very committed to doing things um, on this day, and obviously those organisations, you know, are looking at the core problems of the issues of our world, and I think they probably, if you were to meet any of those uh, civil servants who work for those organisations, my hunch would be that they believe that they are doing the best that they can uh, to resolve the world's issues which are complex. But I'll tell you something that I think in relation to if I was working for the African Union or indeed if I was working for the United Nations. Um, I can tell you that peace is not in their hands. That they are not going to create a peaceful world. The people who are going to create a peaceful world, El, is you and is me. And it's every single other person that I'm looking at in that classroom. Peace is in our hands. And that's the wonderful and exciting thing about the 21st of September. If we want to live in a peaceful and sustainable world, if we want to stop the fighting from happening, then we ourselves are going to have to be involved in the process. And if we unite as a global community, as the youth of our world, I can promise you one thing. Government will follow. Because if the youth of our world mobilise and stand together as one in the name of peace and sustainability, that is what government needs to become involved themselves. So the power of peace is in our hands. You've seen that in South Africa. We've seen that all over the world. We've seen that in Asia. We've seen that in North America. We have seen all over the world individuals like you and me you know, getting together and standing up for peace and it happening. So, uh, you know, and I can, I'll, I'll end this, little, this point with... I was with one of the leading conflict resolution figures in the world, Al, and... His name is Ambassador Brahimi, and he works for everyone, and he's a real player in terms of trying to resolve conflict. And I said to him, what would you do if you were in my position, you know, we're trying to create this day of peace? And he said, well, I wouldn't bother going to the governments, I'd go straight to the people. Because if you mobilise the people, if the people get off their sofas and get off their seats and stand together as one, then government will follow. So peace is in our hands, and that's why... We have to work hard and get together on the 21st of September all over the world in the, in the name of peace and watch what happens. It'll be amazing. We saw it with the Arab sure. Spring. You know, be, be amazing. I mean, the, the, what you're saying, the, I mean, basically just looking at, at the, the Middle East and, and how things have changed purely through the social media, it's evident that, that when you say that peace could happen with young people, that is, I mean, you don't say that very lightly. I mean, that can definitely happen. Without a doubt. Yeah. So, you, you, want, you want to follow up on that question? Or can, can we give someone else a turn and then we can always come back? Yes. Come on up, come on up. He can't bite from there, I promise. <laughs> Hello, I'm Daniel. I just wanted to know, so I know that the 25th of September is going to happen, and I'm sure it's going to be a success, a success, and like every year maybe it will happen. But what are you doing, or like speaking to people about, like, so it's not just one day that everyone recognizes for peace, but like, so that the whole lifetime and the whole years to come are going to be peaceful. So she's saying one day is good, but why stick with one day? Well, listen, I think, listen, there's a good analogy. The analogy is like, you know, cli climbing a mountain. Um, there's a lot of mountains you can climb. But really, we need to get to the top of one 
before we can get to the top of all of them. And, and I think that really that's, that, that helps me as an individual. And I'm sure you understand that, you know, whether you're, whether you're, you've got an exam that you've got to carry out or whether there's a race that you've got to win or, 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 or want to run or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing in life, if you focus on the process and the goal and not the end result, you have a chance of getting to the top. You know, and for me, the world is never united. We've never come together as one. Uh, we've never stopped fighting. And I'm talking about domestic violence as well, and violence in the schools, as well as, you know, people who have got guns, by the way. This is a day of ceasefire and non-violence. We are all involved in violence in some form or another. I don't mean as individuals. I mean we can witness it. And we've felt it. And we've seen people involved in activities. So I think the, the really important point here is that in order for us to have 365 days, or indeed a week, or indeed two days, or however many you would like to see, we've got to get one right first. And therefore, if we get one right, then that could be the inspiration and the catalyst and the stepping stone, you know, to having more days. So I'm with you, I agree with you, and I would like to see what you want to see, but we've got to get it, work, we've got to get it to work for one day first, and that's what this is all about. And, you know, and, 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 you know if it, and if it doesn't work and we didn't do anything ourselves, then don't blame government. That's the whole point. We have to be involved in the peace process. This day is for us. It's not for governments. And so, you know, I'm delighted that your school has taken so much interest in this, you know, and that, you know, by working together, you know, we can create peace one day. Okay. Yeah. Just stick a little bit. So I have to say something, Yeah. Okay. Um, look, I just... I mean, I heard about your project in Afghanistan with the, the health aid and the humanitarian work. Um, but obviously, you see a lot of like Western culture. They're going in and they're exploiting these nations and taking the oil, and this arises a lot of conflicts. And I mean, you can go and you stir up the people, which is really good. But you know, there's also these kind of things which you have to battle. So I just yeah. wanted to know, yeah, like in terms of the oil and the rise of conflicts. I mean, there's a lot of other factors that come into it that you have to resolve before you go into the people. Well, I think that you do, I think personally, I mean, if you were in, in our position, what you do, what we think you do is you do it all at the same time. So, for example, you know, you work with governments and you talk with governments and you work with the UN system and the African Union and the Arab League and the big intergovernmental organizations and big agencies. You have a communications process with them. You also have a communication process with schools. You have a communication process with universities. You know, if you look at our website, you will see that, you know, we have a coalition around students of the world, we have a coalition around domestic violence of the world to reduce the amount of domestic violence that will happen on the 21st September. And in about four weeks' time, we're building a coalition of the leading humanitarian organisations of the world. Some of those organisations, like Interpeace, deal directly with the issues that you've arisen. So I think you're absolutely right that it's complex and it's not just about schools or young people or the individuals of our world. It's actually about all, of, all sectors of society. And we build coalitions and work very hard to try and get the message out far and wide. But I do go back to you know, Ambassador Brahimi's thoughts. You know, and I can tell you that he is one of the leading figures in the world of trying to resolve the kinds of issues that you've just spoken about. And, and what he is saying is if we want to change things, if we want to lift the level of consciousness around the fundamental issues that humanity faces, i.e. to create a more peaceful and sustainable world, then we as human beings, as individuals, are going to have to unite. And in that unity comes hope, and out of hope comes change. So, you know, precisely, once again, why I'm on this call right now is that the power is in our hands, and we need to lead by example. And that example will, I hope, um, evolve us into a new way of relating. Uh, so it's it's pretty it's pretty strategic. It's pretty logical. It's step by step, you know, as as as, as any great journey is. But thank you for your question, and you're absolutely right. But we are tackling it from all levels. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, I'm just wanting to build on what Nick said. There are, as you said, there's a lot of work being done with students and universities and humanitarian aid around the world which is all good and well, but what do you think, I mean, the people that are really having influence at the moment, the two main causes of war, I'm not talking about domestic violence, war, are mostly religion and money, and money branching out to oil and natural resources of such. How would you resolve that? Because that's a big problem, and that's controlled mostly by 
well, the money side, big business, and the other side you have, I'd even go so far as to say, people, religious zealots who are persecuting other minority groups just for practicing what they believe is right, whereas people are mining oil as well in less developed countries for money, and no one has the capacity to tell these people to stop. Um, do you not think a focus should be put on big business as well as the smaller groups? Yeah, well, I think that firstly, the reason why there's more peace in the world now than there's ever been before, um, and if you look at the Global Peace the global peace Index or the Institute for Economics and Peace, they will tell you that there is more peace now than there's ever been before. And that's as a consequence of the fact that the corporate sector is leading that process. So I think that you know, big corporations are actually creating a more peaceful world. And that's not my thoughts, that's just that's the academics, that's just the reality. And that's very positive and very fortunate that peace is actually evolving due to the fact that it is making large corporations a lot more money because they have flexibility to trade, etc., etc. So that's sort of one thought. In